dollars by trading in Right, all right, all right. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Bitcoin Brandon here from Los Angeles, California. It's a quiet storm coming. That's why I had to play this beat. Go ahead and type in the chat box where you're listening in from. We have Stan Williams, Mafu from Maryland, Bouge Bouge from Dallas, Stacey Alugas, Gerald Gardner. Marty from Texas, Tony Pinkston from Philly, and Stan from Florida, Bethany Gibbs from Seattle, Patty Moore from Hawaii, Court Gone, Lorna Vasquez from Dolly City, Shane West from Chicago, first to recognize us in Quiet Storm, <laughs> Renee Hoffman from Malta or Maui. Yeah, I'm about to say Malta. Robert Wood from Baltimore. Court, you're back in Florida. It's a quiet storm. There's something coming on the horizon that I am hyped about. Saying heights is an understatement. Moshe Frazier. Last time I was just hyped on something, we created $10 million. So, yeah. And that was outside of the crypto space. I'm hyped. <laughs> As a disclaimer, I'm not a licensed financial advisor to be dismissing financial advice. I read the news, give my opinion, share suggestions. And it is up to you to make an informed, intelligent decision on which direction you want to move into. There are four rules I live by in the crypto space to have success. Rule number one, crypto education is key. It is everything. Rule number two. Never invest money you cannot afford to lose. Rule number three. Always get your return on investment back as fast as possible. Always. Rule number four. 
Where do you see yourself in 30 days, three months, six months, a year from now? What are you willing to do to make it happen? Find a vehicle that's going to be your foundation. Take action and remain focused. And then most important of them all, and this is the step that gets everybody shook up, is to not get distracted. There's so many things out there that can trip you up. You can't be a part of everything, not even Warren Buffett invested in every Fortune 500 company. That means you might have to say no to some great opportunities. Now, following these rules is not going to guarantee you success, but it will at least minimize your risk, and that is the most that you can ask for. Hip hop, hip hop. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, things kicked off here. I got to do my screen share. There's actually, a, I'm going to take some time today. There's some new news that popped up. I want to make sure that. I'm able to cover it unless, like yesterday, I get a phone call from Mike Boggs <laughs> that messes up my, uh, I'm going to have to jump off early because there's some new news. Yeah, it's Wednesday. I got the gardeners here. All right, first up, we are going to talk about Stellar. Anytime I see Stellar coming in the news, I want to pay attention to it. So let's put this link in the chat box. Hello, Tracy. All right, Stellar. Stellar added to blockchain.com wallet. $125 million XLM airdrop. So blockchain.com, you know they came out with their own wallet, right? And um, they're giving away some free coins. People say, well, well, you know, what does airdrop mean? Airdrop just means that they've got control of coins that you don't have to mine and you don't have to trade or buy it. And they're giving it away for free. It's like a promo type thing. ICOs like to do that in the early days. So the cryptocurrency wallet provider blockchain.com announced that they are now supporting the cryptocurrency Stellar Lumen XLM. Oh, wow. It's working on a hold on one second. We got a new flyer coming out for Chicago. The date is. Oh, it's not allowing me to do that. So I'll have to let her know later. All right, let's get back to this. I can do it on my phone. The this weekend is first. Two weekends. The ninth and tenth. And I will be there the sixteenth and seventeenth. Nice new flyer for Chicago. Okay. The new edition comes with an airdrop of $125 million worth of XLM to its user base. The news got announced in an official blog post on November 6th. What does an airdrop mean and what is blockchain.com? Blockchain.com is the most famous, and let me, you still answer me. <laughs> Uh, doing crypto live as I type this. I can't, I can't talk right now. We'll call right after. Right after. Okay. Blockchain.com is most famous for being one of the biggest and most used wallet providers. The wallet makes it easy for users to control their cryptos with ease and truly use it. Before adding Stellar Lumen, they hosted wallets for Bitcoin, BTC, Ethereum, and Bitcoin Cash. They now have over 30 million wallet users 
and the company wants to thank their users by offering the airdrop. An airdrop means giving away free tokens or coins. And in this case, giving away $125 million worth of coins. Starting today in celebration of adding full support of XLM in the blockchain wallet, we'll begin giving away 125 million stellar to you, our users, with nearly 30 million blockchain wallets to date. We're excited to add an entirely new way for users to get their first crypto. I hope you guys paid attention to that number there. <laughs> Trace, that's the left side of the brain. Blockchain.com has 30 million wallets active right now. There's only 21 million Bitcoin that will ever be in existence, which means there's probably only going to be 8 to 9 million ever in circulation. Not every single wallet will be able to have one full Bitcoin when all is said and done. You guys understand that? That's why it's so important that you accumulate one full Bitcoin now while it's cheap and stash it away. Oh, everybody will have Bitcoin. They just won't have one full Bitcoin. So why airdrops, airdrops and why Stellar? Blockchains.com states that airdrops are a great way for crypto creators to drive decentralization and ad adoption for new networks. It's like the same way we gave away free Bitcoin at the uh, Philly Bootcamp. And we're giving away, I think it's a $1,000 worth the Bitcoin in Chicago at the Chicago event on the 17th. So be ready for that one. Airdrops let new investors test, trade, and transact with the, new, with the next generation of digital assets without having to buy them or mine them for that matter. And just as blockchain never charges listing fees to join our platform, we aren't keeping a single XLM for ourselves. We're giving them all away. That's a lot of OS or O's to distribute. This is the largest airdrop in the history of crypto and likely the largest consumer giveaway ever. The blockchain wallet has always been the, easy, the safest and easiest way to use cryptos, according to the founder. However, now with the new airdrop program, new users can use the blockchain wallet as a place to learn and discover new assets for free. I always, I personally, I, I have a blockchain wallet. I don't store much stuff there. I have an issue with wallets that are so big and they get attention from authorities. I just, I'm, you know, I'm just saying. I like, I like dealing with stuff that's safe, secure, and off the grid. According to blockchain.com, Stellar is a great cryptocurrency to start with since it is built for scalability and is a worldwide currency. And I stated in January of this year. I am long on Stellar. I think Stellar, by percentage-wise, is going to have a, have a greater growth rate than Bitcoin. You can become a Stellar millionaire. It's my own personal opinion. I'm not giving out any financial advice. By growing the blockchain community, they can help more people and own and control their financial future. The first blockchain airdrop, Stellar, is another step in driving this mission forward. What is the price of Stellar now? Let's take a look because I want to. I like to chart this to see if it changes after news like this comes out. They're giving away a hundred something million of it. What will that do to the price? So while that loads up, let me continue reading. Oh, that's the end of it. We're late. We're stating starting with Stellar because of its network. It's built for scalability. It's a token. Its token, XLM, enables quick, low-cost, worldwide transactions, even when millions of people are using it at once. Stellar can even create custom tokens representing real-world or virtual goods and services. Lastly, Stellar has a world-class development community and a vibrant, functioning ecosystem. Really? Are you killing me? Come on with this. All right, we'll come back to coin market cap. Let's go on to next article up. Morgan Stanley report shows state of institutional crypto investments. So yeah, this is always something to pay attention to. Morgan Stanley saying something about crypto. 
Thank you, Chuck Dale. 25 cents is stellar. IBM is going to use XML blocking. That is correct. They are. Morgan Stanley report shows state of institutional crypto investments. The multinational financial services and investment bank Morgan Stanley has recently released its latest Bitcoin and cryptocurrency report. Why don't I just open it up on my other computer? That one's moving much faster. Then what's going on on this one? I've got so many tabs and stuff open. So yeah, the Bitcoin market cap, 219 billion. Bitcoin dominance is at 51%. The market's in the green. It's gone down a little bit the last maybe two hours. So it's kind of flatlining now because I thought I saw Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin's at 5,500. So it's kind of flatlining. All right, let's go back to this article. Oh, yeah, well, with Stellar also. Stellar is up 0.07%, so it's kind of flat. Let's see on this news if anything happens. The report is called Update. Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, and blockchain and touch on all things cryptocurrency related. It was released on October 31st and follows a similar report published uh, by Morgan Stanley. However, unlike the do uh, document published in December, this report has a decidedly more bullish outlook on the tech. Morgan Stanley's review begins by examining the long-term evolution of Bitcoin, as well as how cryptocurrency investments have changed. Moreover, the document outlines the recent surge in interest for so-called stable coins. That's Tether. In addition to this, the report also comes complete with a brief summary of regulatory developments pertaining to cryptocurrencies. This comes as Morgan Stanley lacks a dedicated Bitcoin trading desk, but has previously opened the door to for derivative trading. More specifically, Morgan Stanley is reportedly not intending to trade Bitcoin directly, but is open to offer Bitcoin swap trading tied to futures contracts. That's how rich people are able to get in the game without actually getting in the game. <laughs> you know? So they don't, they don't actually own Bitcoin, but they're owning the betting on it. They're betting on it. Furthermore, Bloomberg has reported that Morgan Stanley has already put measures in place to allow for Bitcoin swap trading. Nevertheless, Bloomberg also alleges that Morgan Stanley will not launch such a service without client demand and internal approval. This comes as Morgan Stanley recently claimed that Bitcoin behaves similarly to the NASDAQ around the dot-com bubble, albeit five times faster. This notwithstanding, the bank also predicted that financial markets could soon increasingly move towards the use of cryptocurrencies. Who, who, who are you going to listen to? Your broke cousin Pookie on the corner or Morgan Stanley? Over the coming years, we think that the market focus could turn increasingly towards cross trades between cryptocurrencies, tokens, which would transact via distributed ledgers only and not via the banking system. The report also includes statistics that support the claim that institutional investors are becoming increasingly involved with cryptocurrency. And you guys know what's up. We got Thanksgiving's about to come up. I know what's going to happen with my Thanksgiving. There's always somebody. Hey, uh, hey, B, you still, uh, you still messing around with that monopoly money, that crypto, Bitcoin stuff? Always. So watch who you're listening to. Bain Capital's $15 million Series B funding round for Seed CX institutional trading platform, Coinbase's $8 billion valuation, and Goldman Sachs and Galaxy Digital's $58.5 million investment in Bitcoin were some of the circumstances raised. You know, and if this was a year ago, you had news like this, Bitcoin price would have shot up to 50K with retail investors, not even institutional ones. It ain't nothing but good news in crypto. I'm trying to remember when was the last time we actually had bad news in the crypto space? I don't remember covering that. Only people who've been critical, but those same people that's been critical are neck deep investing in it. 
So if you guys can help me out, when was the last time we had real negative news in crypto? Oh, well, it's not worth as much as it was in December, but it's still higher than it was a year ago. It's nothing but good news. So why is the market still low? Manipulation. That's why. Manipulation. Nonetheless, the report also outlines some challenges that remain for cryptocurrencies to overcome. More specifically, the relative lack of a stable and coherent regulatory framework is of special concern, according to the report. In addition to this, the document also raises energy consumption as an issue that could potentially spell trouble. Moreover, it goes on to note that banks' responses to Bitcoin have, in general, so far been limited. And those of you guys in uh, KGX, make sure you go through those 45 lessons as fast as possible, because once you go through them, you will understand much, much better when I start reading articles like this. You're going to understand what's going on and, and what it means, and, and you're going to also find you're going to find opportunities in this. I need to take a good nap today. I've been up all night. I can't sleep. Quiet storm coming. All right. Next up. Let's see here. Coin market cap real quick. Just so you guys can know, because I, I look at this at least three times a day. Quick glance, because it tells me a story. Those of you just coming to Chicago, we'll have a private training in. We're gonna go over how to read coin market cap. I gotta figure out how to do this. If I have to, because everybody's gonna to want to see a screen, I might have to do it in my room, put on a big screen or something. But take a look at this. Coin market cap is at 219 billion, just maybe three days ago it was at 202 billion. So it's gained $17 billion in the last 48 hours. Bitcoin dominance dropped from 51% to 50, 54% to 51% since I left Philly. Uh, so new money has came into the space. Tether right now is flatlined a little bit, which means people are taking money out of the coins and they're moving it back into Tether. There's a flatline downward trend going on right now. Best performing coins over the last 24 hours. Basic attention. I need to start paying more attention to them. I don't know why, but they've been exploding lately. 34 cents and a billion coins. I think there's some money to be made on that coin long-term. Revain, Lupring, Eternal Token, Eternity, Mixin. I'm looking for some top 50 coins at least. Qtum is up 4%. Aurora. These are the coins that traders are making a killing on day trading. They're not day trading Bitcoin and stuff. They're making a killing off these altcoins. But they're, you know, they're operating like a bot. They're moving so fast. EOS, up 36%. I'm still surprised by that with the news, latest news that came up. But it is on a downward slide from that, from uh, the news the other day. Stellar, up 0.21%. Number six coin, moving up the ranks. Cardano's eight. What's the worst performing coin to last 24 hours? Electronium. <laughs> Sorry, Electronium holders. You got to keep holding your coins for a bit longer. What is that, Mafuz? That will be listed on Coinbase. I haven't heard that news or covered it and I forgot about it. So, yeah, I might want to. There might be a run up on that because it's about, be, about to be posted up on Coinbase. Dash is down. Funfair. Pundix 1.63. That's still something I'm long on. It's worth 0 0.001 cent right now. $1,000 of this coin and you sit on it. And then what happens when the sucker jumps to 50 cents? <laughs> you know what? I want to play with some math right now. If you had one million, let's uh, scratch that. Let's just even say half of half a million Pundi coins. 
and it goes from 0 0.001 cent to, let's say, 25 cents. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm making some mental notes right now. All right, the Tron is down, IOTA is down. All right, let's get back to the article. Great promotion. Apple blocks crypto podcast, then restores it after Twitter barrage. You know, we just had our election day yesterday. Your voice does matter. You can change things. So Apple attempted to, you know, be draconian. Oh, we're going to block the podcast because it's crypto. People started screaming bloody murder, and then they had to restore it. So let's see what was going on here. Crypto podcast off the chain, produced by Anthony Pompliano, a partner at Morgan Creek, was inexplicably removed from the iTunes store before being restored, for which Pompliano thanks fans who criticized Apple for its actions. The adage, there's no such thing as bad publicity, is a well-known and appears to be true in the case of the Off the Chain podcast, which was inexplicably removed from the Apple Store app last week. It was brought to the public attention when the show's producer, Anthony Pompliano, tweeted about an episode he had created which featured an interview with Bitcoin maximalist M M Murad Mamudov, which has subsequently been removed by the tech giant. The episode focused on the ultimate argument for Bitcoin and reached number four in the U.S. investing category before being removed. There was no warning and no explanation. Pompliano, whose day job is crypto analyst and partner at Morgan Creek, an investment advisement firm based in North Carolina, tweeted, Last week, we released a podcast discussing the ultimate argument for Bitcoin. It exploded and ranked number four in U.S. investing category before mysteriously being taken down by Apple. We had no warning. We don't know why. They took down our podcast, but they can't take down Bitcoin. Pompliano, who was also known as Pomp, also stated that searches for the show were not working. Twitter followers tweeted Pomp asking why Apple may have wanted to remove the show, to which he replied, no clue. We popped to the top because of a powerful message, and now it's taken down. No warning, no explanation, no help. In the meantime, however, it appears that the podcast has been restored and without explanation from Apple. Late yesterday, November 6th, Pomp tweeted, the, pop, the podcast is back. So Apple has finally restored the Off the Chain podcast thanks to all of your tweets, emails, and messages. This episode is the ultimate argument for Bitcoin. I need to re uh, listen to that one. Let's get it to the top of the charts. I want to hear what, what did he have to say? What was his ultimate argument for it? I got to get it off of iTunes. I don't have Apple. I'm an Android guy. But I'll find a way to listen to that. Reaction on the thread has been overwhelmingly positive, with many commending the high quality of the show. A user named Spin 11 tweeted, You should probably thank Apple. Great promotion for the pod of the pod. When questioned on what reason Apple had given for taking the podcast down, Pod tweeted, never got a response, but it just magically reappeared. Wish we knew, but we'll take it. It seems as though we won't know why the cast was taken down. The possibility of a glitch seems possible. I doubt it. However, that it should have lasted so long seems strange. The Twitter response seems generally to be one of skepticism, hinting at some kind of attempted censorship. I agree with that. However, this remains speculative. Regardless of what the reason was, it seems the whole episode has acted as good publicity for the podcast and ironically seems to highlight pro arguments for decentralization. You know, it's interesting, and I don't know why people in positions of power don't understand that when you try to censor somebody, all you're doing is posing more light to it. You know how I got my big break in the United States and my name going out there? It was back in 2011. I was a top producer of a company. 
that most people had never heard of. And we were also dealing with uh, coffee, uh, Gano. And the dominant king at that time was Organo Gold. And um, I forgot the other split off company. Jay Nolan, uh, Rob Hollis was part of another coffee company. So we were the underdogs, and we were, and the home base was in Houston, Texas, too. But I was the number one producer. But I re- quickly realized the CEO never wanted to be big. He was happy at that two million dollar a month range, if that one to two million dollar a month, seven hundred fifty thousand a month, because he was flying underneath the radar screen. And when you hit the top of companies and you start working with owners, you're able to see what's going on behind the scenes. That the rest of the public in the field don't know. And what I saw was like, this dude is doing some illegal stuff. No wonder why he wants to fly underneath the radar screen. But I'm not going to get to a higher level economically unless he changes his ways, goes more legit, and we can really scale this thing. He wasn't willing to do so. And he was afraid by, from our conversation that I was about to jump ship, which wasn't true. So he decided in a preemptive manner to terminate me and took two months of my commissions at the same time without warning. And when he did that, Troy Dooley, this is how me and Troy Dooley came together. Troy Dooley was, uh, and you know, Nicholas, that name, Jay Nolan, just popped up off my head. I was even talking to Bouget about that. I don't remember who that guy's name was. And it just, you know how memory is funny. (laughs) <laughs> it's funny. It just popped out. It was Jay Nolan. He was all uh, heard about Hol- Holton Bugs taking over Organo Gold. Anyways, I wonder what he's up to now. I haven't heard much from him. What's Jay Nolan doing now? But uh, Troy decided to, he was really into the consumer or field, what was his title back then? Because he was part of the DSA and he was protecting when, when companies were acting wrong against the field, field leaders. So he got wind of it, and he did a whole series on it, on me and what happened with the company and fighting for us reps. And my name went, went national at that time. And because of that, people who had no idea who the company was or who I was or what was going on, now I start getting phone calls, and I'm all over the place. So all dude did was brought a spotlight onto his company and all the things he was doing wrong and ended up because he was afraid I was going to take everybody in the company. And that's exactly what ended up happening anyway, not by my doing, but by his doing. He gave me free publicity. That's what Apple did here. That's what Facebook did when they wanted to ban everything crypto and Google. You just gave more publicity to it. All right, next up. And the last article for today, The Daily, and it's from an author I don't like, Kai Sedwick, although to his credit, he's been pretty okay lately. I haven't seen him say anything that's really silly to have me call him out yet. Maybe he's learning. Education is the key. Even he can learn. Pro-Bitcoin governor elected. And Augur predicts the U.S. midterms. You guys go vote yesterday? Everybody vote? <laughs> what is that, Nicholas? Oh, he doing success by healthy coffee and Holton investing in some bot that trade token. The token never hit any exchange. Success by health coffee. I remember Jay started another coffee. I didn't hear nothing out after that for a week or so. I might look him up, see what he's doing. Uh, let's see. Wednesday's edition of the Daily has a distinctly political tint, coming a day after U.S. voters turned out for the midterm elections. I have uh, the only thing I have to say about elections: put it on the blockchain. Every time I turn on the news right now, it doesn't matter if it's on Fox, CNN, or MSNBC. I'm hearing, no matter what side it is that there might have been voter fraud or voter tampering or illegal votes or, you know, voter prevention, people doing funny stuff at polls. I heard one landlord 
the day, the morning of election decided to foreclose on the tenant, lock the building up and nobody could get in there to the voting machine. Like, like that was a coincidence. <laughs> you know, people be doing some shady stuff out there during elections. Put it on the blockchain. And any politician or any side or any news media that is against voting to go on the blockchain, you look at them with a side eye and you know that they're corrupt. I don't care, Democrat or Republican, they're corrupt. Because the blockchain brings, for the first time in human history, I want you guys to get this. I haven't been speaking like this too much lately. But the blockchain brings for the first time in human history 100% ultimate complete freedom and a level playing field because it cannot be manipulated. It cannot be changed. It cannot be held hostage. Everybody has equality regardless of your skin color or the language you speak or the country you're born in or the family you were raised in, or the school you went to. It is complete freedom with an equal playing field. The only thing that is not equal in this field is your desire, work ethic, and willingness to learn more. You have equal opportunity, and that's all we ask for. But you do not have equal right to success meaning guaranteed success, that comes off of your work. So the blockchain levels the playing field. So if any politician is like, nah, no blockchain, no distributed ledger for voting, we need to keep doing it the way we're doing it, yeah, you're corrupt. Get out of here with that. So Wednesday's edition of The Daily has a distinctly political tent coming a day after U.S. voters turned out for the midterm elections. There was plenty to excite supporters on both sides of the divide. The pro and anti cryptocurrency divide, that is. In addition to talking politics, we take a look at the new stellar airdrop that's causing quite a stir. We just read that article, right? It was widely predicted that the Democrats would regain control of the U.S. House of Representatives in the midterm elections, not least on decentralized prediction market Augur. The crowd powered Ethereum application had close to 1.4 million in Ethereum staked on the outcome of the event, with 97% favoring the Democrats. For anyone interested in seeking crowd wisdom on other political events, Augur is currently calling a 36% chance of Donald Trump being reelected in 2020. I am not that much familiar with Augur and how they do things. I'm going to have to pay attention to them. In addition to voting for the House and the Senate, U.S. citizens in 36 states cast their vote in gubernatorial elections, including Colorado. There, Bitcoin advocate and pro-tech candidate Jared Polis, I read about him before, was elected as governor. The tech advocate and gamer earned a fond place in Bitcoiners' hearts in 2014 when he vowed to fight any attempt by the government to restrict the cryptocurrency's growth. I like that. And another, and another boon for Bitcoin advocates, Gavin Newsom was elected governor of California yesterday. The 51-year-old Democrat was one of the first politicians to accept campaign donations in BTC back in 2014. That's right, Bouget. Serena G. I remember that. But he kind of fell off the map real quick. Ain't heard much from him since then. BTC Wallet Service Blockchain.com is airdropping $125 million worth of stellar lumens to its users. The wallet provider recently launched a service allowing cryptocurrency developers to airdrop tokens to its 30 million users. I wonder if blockchain.com is looking long-term on that. Do you know how much 
$125 million of lumens right now is going to be worth in five years? And they're giving it away for free? Hmm. The free crypto comes with a catch. Ah, ha, ha. ah, here you go. This is why I was nervous and saying, why, you know, I'm looking at blockchain.com as a wallet where I'm going to store my money. Nope. Wallet owners will need to undergo KYC to participate. Know your customer. And that's, they have to do that for legality in the United States. But at the same time, that also means that they're, ter- they're turning that data over to the IRS if the IRS subpoenas it. You know, they're going to be doing 1099. I don't have a problem with that. But crypto is supposed to be anonymous at the same time. I don't want the IRS to be able to track all of my wallet addresses because they got in with one exchange. Hmm. I'm, sk- I'm skeptical on that, but it, there, we, may, we may not be able to avoid it. While there are clear benefits of distributing tokens, To as wide a community as possible, not least to Stellar, the $125 million giveaway will not change the fact that XLM's ownership is highly concentrated, like Ripple. Excluding the tokens held by the Stellar Development Foundation, the top 100 holders possess almost 95% of all XLM. See, this is why Green X is only allowing individuals to own 10 machines or buy 10 machines a month. You don't want to have 95% of all coins is owned by 100 people. Although right now with KGX, (laughs) we've got the first 12.5 billion coins is being mined by less than 3,000 mining rigs. But that's still greater than 100 holders. Airdropping 0.47% of the total circulating supply of 104 billion will not alter that. There's nothing particularly exciting or inclusive about a centralized tokens KY seed airdrop, tweeted Matt O'Dell. Don't sell your privacy for $25 worth of XLM. Well, XLM is just another version of Ripple. They're a competitor of Ripple. But regardless of you being skeptical on that, there's money to be made. I'm skeptical as hell about Ripple, but I own it. I'm not stupid. Who's this guy? Nick Carter. To the folks at Stellar that are struggling with the very hard problem of fairly issuing a new currency, I am delighted to inform you that a certain Satoshi Nakamoto solved the problem many years ago with a mechanism called proof of work. Okay, that's that's uh, what we call shots being fired. <laughs> you know, nerd talk. Nerds will read that and go, ooh, did he just say that? Ooh. Everybody else is like, what's he talking about? Celebrity endorsement of cryptocurrency is generally welcomed by the community. But Bitcoiners aren't sure what to make of Gwyneth Paltrow shilling Bitcoin. The fact that her pro-Bitcoin article was authored by the CEO of wallet service Abra, which used the opportunity to promote its services, sat uneasily with many with the next web exposing the links between Gwyneth Paltrow and Abra. Someone just taught me a text, you know, what Bitcoin wallet would I recommend? Well, you know, I'll give you two where you own the private key. And that is the uh, 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 Exodus and Bread, BRD. And, And I just used Bread as a test. For example, when I was in Philly and I was giving away the Bitcoin, I had set up my bread wallet with finger, uh, you know, um, touch, fingerprint access. And that's fine. But when I attempted to send Bitcoin, it actually wanted me to put in my six digit code, which for whatever reason was not working for me. And I know I didn't use any other code than what I was using. So when I came home, I did, I used the recovery of my 12 digit seed code and it restored everything. I was able to change my password. So that gave me even more confidence in BRD wallet. It's on your phone. You own the key. 
Even if you lose your phone or your phone gets wiped, you can restore it just like Exodus. So now I'm falling in love with the bread wallet now. And because it's mobile, <laughs> shut, shut up, Brandon. I'm going to start to run my mouth on something. So the fact that her pro, okay, I read that part. Let's see here. Many Bitcoiners, however, seem more offended that their beloved cryptocurrency was being shielded by a site that sells $30 psychic vampire repellent and $55 vaginal, vaginal steamers. What, what's a vaginal steamer? I've never heard of that before. But I get what they're saying. You know, I used to be hurt when I was in high school. In Heron, California, we always had like a, a BSU day for Magic Mountain. And Magic Mountain, for those of you out in other states, is Six Flags. In California, it's called Magic Mountain, Magic Mountain Six Flags. I think there's a Six Flags uh, Adventures in Georgia. There's one in Philly, around the country. And the problem I had was, and BSU stands for Black Student Union. And I was the president of mine. And it was a day that, you know, we all could have safe fun together with other BSUs around the, the state at Magic Mountain. The problem I had was they also made, it was the day that for the Black Student Union, they also had for Handicap Day and the uh, Latino Student Union and all these odd, odd groups. And it's, I have nothing against the handicaps, but why you got to put handicap day mix in with BSU day as if what, because we're minorities, we, 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 we're handicapped. We're not considered normal. I had an issue with that. So I understand what they're saying here that Gwyneth Paltrow is shilling Bitcoin. And at the same time, they say, oh yeah, we're going to sell psychic vampire and vaginal streamers. I'm sorry, steamers. Yeah, why got to be all like that? Why can't it just have it be by itself? So I, I understand. <laughs> so none of y'all going to tell me what a vaginal steamer is? All right. I should shut up about that because I'm on a crypto talk. <laughs> hey, it's in the news. I didn't make it up. I never heard of that before. Let me just see how it's done. All right. So en enough of this for today. That is four articles we covered this morning. I should be back tonight for late night crypto talk. This was another article. I'll save this one. Coinbase's CTO says crypto is becoming mainstream in tech firms. All right. What I, I got to say, the vaginal streamer steamers for late night crypto talk. Is that what you're saying? Well, if it's in the news, yeah, okay. <laughs> Are you going to text it to me later what it means? <laughs> All right. I'm just curious. All right. You guys have a great day. Uh, more than likely, I will be doing a Facebook Live with the camera on because I'm excited about something that's more exciting to me than green. And the countdown is on. I'm needing um, Mike Boggs, Stephen McCullough. I'm needing those guys to make this thing happen as fast as humanly possible because if you make it happen as fast as humanly possible based on what we've done in the past i already know we'll add another 10 million plus into the business that's all i'm going to say you want the money let's make it happen with that everybody have a great day bitcoin brandon out i'll see you later on the facebook live Bye-bye.